Okay? So we're working on the free body diagram, right? Okay, so, well, the way to think about that is first to draw the other forces that we do know. So let's make a picture of the forces we do know, because remember the hinge is reactive. It's just reacting to the other forces to try to keep the object from moving. So we can't figure out what the hinge is going to be like until we know what the other forces are going to be like. too hard. So every object has a weight and you drew the weight operating at the center of mass. Then we also have this extra weight on the end, this mass that they're holding on to. So this is another weight. a different weight from this one over here. Then you have the biceps muscle, which could pull up like a string. So here we have that force from the biceps. Now, is there any X forces on this object? No. Therefore, we don't need an X hinge force. Well, we have the weight, and we know the weight is po pointing down. Mm -hmm. Here we have the weight of the forearm. We know that's pointing down. And we know that the bicep is pulling up in the direction of the bicep. So none of those have an X component. Right. I guess I just was still stuck on why the hinge doesn't, isn't like holding. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Let me just read this problem a little more carefully to make sure I'm on the right track. By the way, as I think you've seen, there's no extra force from this vertical bar because the vertical bar is connected at the hinge. So any force from the vertical bar is coming from the hinge. So we don't have to think about this separately. One thing that's a little bit tricky is you have to assume that the biceps here force is vertical, but that's how it's drawn. The bicep here was drawn as vertical. So again, the key is to remember that hinges are reactive forces. They only come into play if it's necessary to keep an object from moving. Right, right now, the hinges, uh, yeah, well, uh, so it, it, just like, uh, well, they're reactive. They only come into play if it's necessary to keep the object from moving. Well, there are no forces that are tending to move this object horizontally. There's nothing that's tending to move the forearm horizontally, so there's nothing for the hinge to react against. Yeah. And if the hinge, sorry? Oh, that, that's finally what makes sense to me, is that there's not going to be any force in the expression going this way, like there was with that tension force in the last right. problem, and there's not going to be anything to counteract it. That's right. So the last problem was a very good setup for that. Okay. In the last problem, we saw that as long as the rope was pulling the object to the right, then we needed a hinge force to the left. But remember, what happened when we disconnected the rope? Well, when we disconnected the rope, we also said that we should um, say that there's no horizontal hinge force right. as well. Well, here, um, it, it's like we're starting in the second case with no rope. So there's nothing for that to react against. Okay, so but then how, how are you certain that there is a force from the hinge in the y direction? We can't be certain of it right now, but it's very likely. Um, it's possible that all of these forces are going to completely balance out with, at, without any help from the hinge, but that would be a huge coincidence. Um, it's very, uh, unless there's a huge coincidence and all these forces happen to be exactly the right amount to balance out, um, we're probably gonna need a hinge force over here to help balance them out. 
Um, but we don't, it's really not obvious what direction this hinge force is going to be in. You could, um, it would be, you could really have to do that from the math. So we'll just have to take a guess. Um, so take a guess, should we guess this is up or down? Or, um, yeah, for our free body diagram, we just have to take a guess. Or we just leave it up in the air and let the math tell us. So I'll just say, just for the heck of it, that the hinge force here is up just so I can draw something. But I'll put a question mark to show I don't really know what the direction is. But how do we know for certain that there isn't even one in at all, like in any direction? There might not be. Okay. But again, remember, what, what, why would we need a hinge force? So this is another statics problem, right? Or is it? Did they say that we're uh, not yeah, moving? It's for, like, the first. Yeah, so at the beginning, we're treating this like a statics problem. That means that all the net forces and the net torques have to be zero. Mm -hmm. So when will there be a hinge force when that is necessary to make um, the, the net force equal to zero? Probably you're gonna choose, if you choose this as the pivot, it won't put in any torque. But you might need this to make the net force y equal to zero. So there will be a hinge force here if that's required to make this net force y equal to zero. Now, it's possible that just by coincidence, I suppose it's possible that just by coincidence, all these other forces might exactly balance each other out. Uh, and then we wouldn't need this hinge force, but that would be a huge coincidence. Um, 99 times out of 100, they're not gonna exactly balance each other out and you wouldn't need this hinge force. I'm not even sure, there might be some reason why there's no way these can balance. Um, Actually, I can see now that I made the wrong guess as to the direction of the hinge force here. But yeah, if you think about this more carefully, there's no way that all these forces can balance. Um, uh, so um, there is going to have to be a hinge force. But even if that's not obvious to us, we can say um, that uh, it seems like probably there's no reason to think these forces are already going to balance, and then we'll need the hinge force. That probably is going to clarify as we work through the problem. So, uh, but we know for sure there's no x component, because there's, no, there's nothing that it can even conceivably have to balance. It seems very likely that we need something here to balance out the other vertical forces, but there are no horizontal forces to balance. Okay. That was why when you asked me um, about the hinge forces, my answer was draw the other forces first. You can't even start thinking about the hinge force until you know the other forces it might be reacting against. Okay. So we'll probably come back to that after we work through the other parts of the problem, but uh, I think we explained that somewhat. So part B. So what was your answer? Um, it was 30 minutes. A couple technicalities there. I noticed that they specifically reminded us to think about the signs here. Now I saw that you drew your positive direction. So again, you've chosen to choose clockwise as your positive direction, so that's fine. Uh, your instructor lets you do that. and. So what would be the sign for this torque? Okay. Yeah. It's probably best to actually put in that positive sign to show that we've actually thought about that. Now, what are the units for torque? I wasn't sure. I just ah. guessed. 
Well, do you remember what's the basic formula for torque? Force times distance, right? Here's one of the formulas for torque. Well, what are the units for force? Uh, and for R? Meters. So it's going to be joules or newton meters. Yeah, it would be newton meters. Theoretically, you could call those joules. Mm -hmm. However, um, even though torque has the same units, uh, so joules is reserved for energy and work. Right. Even though torque has the same units as energy and work, the convention is not to actually call those joules because it's a different concept. So we'll just call it newton meters. Trigonometric functions don't have units, so the sign here doesn't contribute any units. So we just have newtons and meters.